Hello and welcome to the first of what is hopefully a very useful and prosperous series. Uh, one of the main things that people are curious about or have problems with when they get into Shadowrun is designing a run. So I'm going to do that work for you right now. I hope to put out a couple of these, maybe two or three a month. I I don't want to commit to anything quite yet, but we're going to include some of the basic notes. The finer details is really going to be up to you guys to fill in. Uh, things like how much you're going to pay them and the exact strength of the opposition, because that is going to differ from table to table. I'm going to give you the outline, I'm going to give you the things, and then I'm going to talk about how the run went down at the tables that I played it at. Most of these will probably be the a run that I have done on the Runner Hub, or maybe in a, in a more private section. I don't really know if there's anything in that. Um, for the first one is going to be my Roadkill run. It was uh, Games for GMs 1, which there is a link for there is over on my channel in my Games for GM section. I ran it as, with a bunch of GMs from the Shadowrun subreddit to uh, to try and help people learn more about GMing. Because when you ask questions and it's about your table, it's hard to make that connection of uh, relevance. Not relevance is the word I want, but that consistency isn't really there because it's on different tables. The idea with the games for GMs is I want a couple of GMs to sit down and play, and then we can talk about the things that we either did in the run or what is going to happen and that kind of stuff so that we can all have a communal experience with which to draw from and get hopefully significantly more accurate answers. Um, please check them out. They will be great. So, the first one of these is going to be Roadkill. This run I made because I saw a bunch of Roadkill on the side of the road going to and fro work. The basic premise is an investigation run. Uh, do it this way. It's more of a type of run. Investigation. Uh, players are going to be hired to figure out what happened. The Johnson is a corporate type. Corporate bound. You can pick and choose whichever corporation you like. For the when I ran it, I went with Horizon. If you have a runner who has a corporate sin, maybe make it that corporation instead. Because this way you can put a little bit of pressure on him and maybe make him a little bit uncomfortable because like, oh crap. If that corporation is after him, and this guy is not obviously, but easily found out that he has relations to uh, said corporation, easily found out his relations. Um, this way, when they discover that, it might put a little bit of a, oh, crap, what's what are we going to do here, type kink into them. The second part of it is make him different. Uh, when I Both times when I ran, ran this game, I used an overweight elf, because elves are always portrayed as that forever young, beautiful, attractive. Making him overweight is contrary to that in a way that you don't really see all that often. So this way it's like, okay, now, all of a sudden, he he poses a question of why is this guy um, this way? Does he live in some kind of opulence, or is he just rich? Um, figure out how I can... I need to get, like, a text-to-speech type thing or something. I used... Oh. The second aspect of him that I used was his assist his assistant. Trope him up. Use the... Make him kind of like the guy from Office Space, where he is soft-spoken and crumbles under pressure from the Johnson, who is also there. Give him that 
have him do most of the talking. I had the meet at a restaurant where the Johnson had a large variety of very expensive foods in front of him, but did not offer to pay for the runner's meals. Didn't even really had pre-ordered, was eating, did not offer to buy them food. Most of the talking of the initial run was done through the assistant with only the Johnson kind of coming in at times to berate him. Gives a little bit of personality to the Johnson and who he is, makes it a little bit different than just the dude in the professional suit with the troll bodyguard who's going to tell you to do criminal things. So, you know, trope him up, cliche him out to the nines. It'll be great. The job itself. His daughter was recently in a car accident motorcycle in touristville normally not that big of a deal he is a rich person and he has a dock wagon contract for her and his daughter dock wagon medevaced her out her out and is currently in a hospitalization of of your choice the important thing here is that she is in a coma at the moment. She is non-responsive. Her injuries are fairly severe. They are prepping to do a, a bit of augmentation. The specifics of the augmentation for repair isn't, uh, isn't super important. The, the thing to make it is two to three essence worth. It can easily be, well, her arm got wrecked, so rather than waiting the months for the, the clone arm to replace it, because I'm rich, I don't need a a, a mechanical cyber arm, they're going to go ahead and uh, give her a cyber arm for now, because this way she can kind of go about her, her daily life and continue to operate with the assumption that in the... Uh, near future, she's going to have that cloned arm and she'll be back to being all natural and not um, not like the unwashed masses. This will be important in a little bit. Uh, as she is in a coma, it can be things like cerebral boosters, mononic enhancers, um, that kind of thing. Maybe a little bone lacing to repair some micro fractures throughout most of her skeleton and that kind of stuff. Um, important details. Has no augmentations at current. Uh, being only 17 to 18. She has not uh, well, absolutely terrible trying to do this. 17 to 18 year old. She has a hot pink sin of a bike. The bike, however, is um, the term they use for it in Rigger 5 is your stout. So this is actually a highly custom bike. And some of the, the reason for this I will come back into uh, in a little bit. The no augmentations. Her, she's young. Recently got out of corp sponsor schooling. She. One of the ways that I introduced the fact that the Johnson was corporate bound was when they did some searching on the daughter. They found an article of her standing next to her father, which was the the Johnson. Um, at like some graduation ceremony from a, uh, in my case, Horizon sponsored schooling. Uh, 18 to 17 years old, elf. The elf part will actually become important. The father is also an elf. Um, other information that he is able to easily give the runners is location of the accident, which is currently in Touristville or whichever. Um, 
low lifestyle, criminally oriented area you have in your location. Um, we'll get to that a little bit more as we go on here. Um, what he wants. Uh, KE or the law is moving too slow for him because he is a large, important man and he needs things done right now. Given as they were able to get her to the hospital and she is not in any actual danger, she is stable but in a coma, which is no big deal. They, ah, coma, whatever, we're going to get this fixed up in a couple of days. Um, Implantation in two to three days. This will become important. So he wants to know what happened. With the caveat of if foul play is involved, job may escalate. So you can go in with a moderate to low paying job because he doesn't really want you doing anything crazy. He wants to find out what happened to his daughter because the law isn't really giving him a, the, a big deal. At this point, the legal aspect of things is there was an accident in Touristville. The driver is fine. Doesn't seem like anything else is really going on. So really all we need to do is find their bike. Bike is missing. That is the secondary like, find out what happened, get back that bike. The bike was a gift for her, uh, gift for her birthday, graduation, whatever you want to do. Other event. Um, sounds kind of simple. It gives a bit of a wide berth of things for you to have happen. Um, going into legwork, a couple of different aspects dependent upon your team can, can go a couple of different ways. Oops. Um, in the matrix, you'll be able to find reports of the accident things you can find from here are names of the dock wagon guys who extracted her. Uh, confirm location time. Uh, uh, KE personnel who are in charge of what hospital she is in. And whatever else you really want to give them as they search. So I try to scroll down more and realize that the Google Drive may have not have been the best part for all this because it's now kind of not exactly scrolling properly. I will apologize to those of you who may be watching this at a later time because I don't know what I'm doing trying to, to learn as I go. It would be great in, you know, six months' time when I'm a master at this. Nothing seems as clumsy as it does today. I look forward to that time. Uh, location. So when they get to the location, what they're going to find is it is a um, back alley type strip where there's going to be shops and such around. That whole sort of street market type feel, it is in Tursville. There's going to be a bunch of low lifestyle people. There may be some gangs slash criminal element going around. That'll be just kind of hanging out. This is also a avenue for people who may have gang contacts or organized crime contacts or related knowledge skills to get involved in that aspect of things. The shop keeps 
they they will be there and will have probably seen the actual accident itself. How you wish to to play that out is up to you. Dependent. When I did it on my Games for Jams game, the shopkeepers weren't there at the actual time of the accident because the ancients had come through and kind of pushed everybody out because they were going to use this area for the race, which we'll get into later. Um, physical evidence. Uh, paint transfer. Skid marks. Uh, minor damage. Cameras. Here's what we get into some of the important stuff. The cameras are going to catch footage of the actual accident, and what they're going to see is hot pink bike come tearing around the corner. If you have riggers or other vehicle-oriented people, they could totally roll some of their knowledge skills or maybe even their auto mechanic or their pilot ground craft plus an intuition, something like that. Let them... If they whatever they want to try and figure out, let them let them roll dice to do it. Um, if somebody, at worst, your matrix guy who's kind of hacking the cameras can discern the average speed that this bike was traveling, because you can do like you know frame by frame, see how far things are progressing, do some of that CSI crap. Um, they will see the bike crash into the side of a building. This will work out if you have a rigger because it will, the rigger will have personal experience of if you are rigged into the bike, you can probably make that turn. But if you are not, it's really hard. So she's going to crash, be thrown from the bike, then the bike will steady itself, followed by it, and drive off. Bike crashes, tosses her to the ground, which is where she is picked up by Dock Wagon in a couple of minutes, and then the bike will continue off going. Shortly after, seconds really, uh, two to three ancients bikes are going to come around. This is the first real bit of misdirection that's going on. She is driving her bike really fast through an unpopulated area, and a couple of ancient bikers are seemingly chasing her. Um, but in reality, we know behind the scenes that they are not actually chasing her. This is a race. And details of the race we'll get into as we continue on down and go forward. Um, magical here we're going to have, like, if they do an ascensing of the area, you can describe it as you have for your criminal element. There is a bit of excitement in the general area of where the crash happened. You know, it was a strong emotional event, and then that kind of stuff. Um, I'm just going to roll back up here for real quick. Not like an extraction. X minutes later. You can fill in the time as you seek fit. <clears throat> Excitement. Normal. Background. Feelings. Um, you can get a little bit more in-depth. Actually, I will come in with the... Let me screw all of this up. There it goes. Personnel. In the area, there's going to be the shopkeeps. Uh, in my second version of this, they were told to stay clear during the time of the accident. They wanted the ancients in clearing this route, wanted everybody kind of off of it because they didn't want to, uh, they don't want to deal with people. Other interesting things is the homeless guy. Homeless Henderson. One of the things they're going to notice on the camera is uh, kept people open. That 
shortly after the crash, as people come out to see what happened, a homeless-looking gentleman is going to come out and, in a sort of acting homeless crazy kind of way, keep people away from her body on the ground, but he doesn't touch her. He doesn't do anything to her. He just kind of like, Arr! and keeps them away. People know this guy. He's a little bit of a crazy. A little bit of a crazy. And not wanting to deal with him, they're, they keep away from him. A couple of minutes go by, and that's when, when Doc Wagon is in the area. Everybody kind of scatters a little bit. In a lower lifestyle area, when Doc Wagon comes in to extract a person who's worth a lot of money, they're going to ask significantly fewer questions than these people are prepared to give answers to. So it's, I'm just going to get out of here. Uh, I don't need to deal with that headache. I don't need to be shot at. I don't need to be taken in and blamed for what happened. So Doc Wagon scatters the crowd. However, you will get a good look at the homeless guy, and people around the area will know who. Here's where you can introduce a whole bunch of information of your choosing. The shopkeeps, when they're talked to, can give information about being asked, or more importantly, being told, you're not going to be operating here between this hour and this hour, and that'll be the time of when the, the race slash accident is like, we need you people off the streets. If you want, you can also drop the fact that the this race is something that happens on the regular, and given as the ancients are a go gang, they are known to use these kinds of races as a initiation type thing. So that poses a little bit of a question. Now, ideally, they would have then looked at they would have looked at the cameras first and seen these ancients chasing them and begun to draw conclusions. When they begin to talk to people, they may find out that the ancients use this area as a initiation or a test race. And that's now going to throw things into a little bit of question. If they track down Homeless Henderson, if things go well, give them the idea that he's not as crazy as he appears to be. His eyes still shine with the light of intelligence. His musculature and his build is somebody that does not look like they've struggled to eat for a while. The idea being is that Henderson isn't actually homeless. He's laying low for whatever thing that he's done. This means if the runners are willing to play ball with him and they get those those hints and they work with it, he can give them whatever kind of crazy information here you want to give them. Information about the ancients, the direction that they went, the the fact that he didn't want anybody messing with the girl because he's hiding out here. It's if Doc Wagon stays around to find personal belongings and that kind of thing, or they start asking questions, all of a sudden his cover is a, in significantly more danger. Um if they go to try and trace down the dock wagon people, let them find them. They'll have information about her injuries. Um, people who have medical knowledge, the medicine skill, biotechnology, maybe even just a large amount of cyberware themselves, can kind of extrapolate on what kind of augmentation she might be receiving, or some good roles with the dock wagon folks that extracted her would be like, well, this is what they usually do. And you give the idea of what she might be looking forward to as far as augmentation. Um, they will also be able to supply her uh, her personal effects. If, if you can convince the dad that looking through her personal effects will help you guys solve it, he will be able to tell the Doc Wagon folks, all right, let these couple of guys go through her stuff. and you can plant whatever kind of clues you get into. Um, from here, I'm going to bring out the twist. So, here's what actually happens. His daughter, as they are often wants to do, has a bit of a 
rebellious streak and not necessarily fallen in with the wrong crowd, but she has gotten an interest in driving her bike as obnoxious as it is and getting involved with that kind of stuff. But being an elf, sooner or later she ran into some ancients in however you really want to want to play it out. Maybe it was in Touristville. Maybe it was going to some late night drag strip races or some underground races. Maybe it was just running into somebody from school like in her younger years that is now a gang member. However you really want to do it. So daughter interested in hanging with ancients. That's great. You can totally be into to this kind of stuff, but the ancients are going to test you because they're a go gang. They may not want a hanger on, no matter no matter how pretty she is or that kind of stuff. So this is a a test or initiation because maybe she's looking to join. Maybe she is having more fun here and doesn't want to get into the corporate life that her father is doing. Or maybe she's hoping to keep a a double life because she's you know smarter than him. As such, the ancients have set up this race versus however many you wish to use of their folks to see how good she does. They go to this area in Touristville. They tell everybody near us, like, all right, look, between the hours, whenever you want this accident to happen, you guys need to be cleared out. A couple of, during, they will come by, there will be an accident. The people who are racing aren't going to stop because they don't see um, don't see her go down because she is a couple of seconds ahead of them. But they do see the obnoxious bike. So, you know, there's that streak of pink. I'm going after her because she's still beating. She's winning the race at this point. She will, however you want to set it up as get into the ancients or pass some kind of test to get some respect from them, that kind of thing. Maybe it, maybe it just started off with a a bunch of trash talk, and now they're, this is the race to settle that trash talk. Maybe they're racing for pink slips. Who knows? So seeing the bike continue, they're going to continue after the bike because they want to win and they have the route and they know where they're going. What happened is is the tricky part. Daughter actually a low res technomancer during the race the high emotional aspects of things maybe uh maybe that is where she had her emergence maybe it was always something that was kind of in the background but she never really got into things however during the race she jumps into her bike accidentally not really knowing what it is and that emotional surge of I need to go faster I need more control that kind of thing she falls into her bike as part of the standard tricked out bike is going to be it is going to be a rigor interface oh go back up here to the notes so that that here custom bike Rigor interface. As I ruin everything. Sorry, guys. Um, so she is fallen into her bike and is continuing the race. She will end up winning said race. However, she is now scared and confused because she doesn't know how to get back out. She didn't even really know that she was a technomancer. Maybe this was her emergence straight into the bike. However you want to, to work that. Nobody really knows how Technomancers work with their craziness. Um, the second part of this twist is augmentations will kill her. It is enough of essence loss that when she gets these augmentations, it will burn out her resonance and she will lose the tentative connection she has between her body and the bike. So, you can't tell the players this, obviously, 
but in two to three days when those augmentations go through, she will die on the operating table to some unforeseen and probably unknown to them um, reasoning. These kind of things happen all the time. The Johnson will be very upset and potentially really pissed off at the runners if um, what you call if this is one of the, the earlier runs and you have newer players. You can kind of not worry about that part of him being angry and stuff. You could even scale back on the her dying. That is kind of up to you. Um, thus far in the two times that I have done this run, I apologize for that break. That was me brain farting. Um, it hasn't gotten to that point. They've managed to solve the the puzzle in... Uh, usually like a day and a half. Um, I hope now with this twist a little bit revealed, it makes a little bit more sense as to some of the things I was alluding to earlier. Continuing on, now that you guys have a a decent idea of what happened there, it, well, where do we go? And this is where it's going to really depend upon your um, your team makeup and that kind of stuff. If they have Ancients contacts, let them go to the Ancients. They don't even necessarily need Ancients contacts to do it. If they have an Elf or something like that, they can find out where it is. Um, the people in the area will know of a small few block area, highly Elven, some Ancients presence. The, there's a couple of blocks... A, a decent bit away from where the thing, where the race happened, and in the direction the bike was kind of going off into. Unfortunately, you're going to have to kind of screw them a little bit with the cameras losing footage of the bike and not being able to completely track it to where it's going to go. The the small ancient's place is a a, a, lo, a elven community where. I will, sorry about the thing. I will get it in a second. Um, the the agent's present is not quite a recruiting ground, but it is a being a pro elven society, a pro elven uh, organization. They like to keep a look on things, and this is a bit of a recruiting ground for them. So, as uh. As they are here, this is kind of where the bike ends up. Um, nobody really knows, and for the most part, not really willing to talk about it. It'll be in a uh, in a garage that's got a little bit of Wi-Fi blocking paint and that kind of stuff, but the resonance works in mysterious ways. Uh, other places they can go, they can go to mechanics. Find out more info about who made the custom bike. They can go to. They can go straight to the Johnson actually at this point. Um, was chased by ancients. Technically, at this point, you uh, you do have the option of. This is kind of what happened. Maybe they find out a little bit more about the um, the accident than what was in the original police report. It is potential that the the Johnson is satisfied with this. It depends upon your group and how things are going. The uh, the Johnson may ask for more information, or maybe like, well, I want the bike back. with the potential for more money. Because it's like, all right, we did what you wanted. Here's your information. It's like, well, all right, I will, now that since you're already there, here's a couple more new yen to go get me my bike back. This will kind of keep your players into it, but, you know, gauge your table as they are interacting with things. Um, they can go to the, the cops, see what's up with the, what's up, the police report. And maybe the cops have more information about 
the current location, the um, maybe somebody in the cops has a connection with the ancients and is doing his part to bury paperwork so that the ancients don't have to deal with the cops um, coming down on them to, to find this bike. Uh, it kind of really depends upon what the the team wants to do. Options are here to end the run. Options are here to continue the run. Um, in both the times that I have run it, they have per pressed on to go to the Ancients area and see what's up. They have talked their way through or kind of snuck their way through. With the Ancients, it is a uh, kind of like a community center. The Ancients are doing things to improve the general area. There's a couple of people here who aren't Elven. Most of them are, and the ones that aren't flying Ancients colors are usually wearing like a um, green and black bandana around their arm, or however you want to describe the fact that while they are not part of the gang, they are being protected by the gang. Uh, the mechanics, if you want, instead of the elves, maybe you can have the mechanics have chop shop contacts or someone selling the bike. Shadier mechanics in the Shadowrun universe are going to have criminal contacts. If you if your team isn't interested in going to the ancients and said go to a mechanics, maybe they know a couple of people who run a chop shop for two. And given as it's a gross, hot pink, highly customized thing, maybe somebody is trying to sell it um, piecemeal before breaking it up. And a mechanical person might know those guys and can put you in contact with them, be it like if you start off with your rigorous mechanic contact, or if you just do a Google search for uh, garages in the immediate area, or however they really end up getting there, you can use that to push them back towards the bike. Um, the Johnson gets a little hard on the uh, tracking the bike part down, but he's more there to serve the but wait, there's more that he wants you to do. Um, The cops, maybe they have it in an impound. Maybe they're able to point you towards the ancients. If they do have that connection to the, uh, like you want to work that detective that is on the take, uh, he can point you there for a, a bribe or something like that. Like that. They could potentially also be able to point you towards a chop shop or really wherever you want to put it. Um, when they eventually get to the bike, bike, it'll be behaving oddly. Uh, imagine like a a cat or a dog that is maybe acting like a cat or a dog that is acting instinctually and kind of backing off from them. Because in inside of that bike is a frightened young girl. I can't spell. Sorry for anybody that's driving nuts. The the bike will have a basically like a persona attached to it still, which is going to be odd to anybody who in your team is matrixly oriented. Um, normally this wouldn't be a thing, and if um, you have like a rigor or something like that on your team, they might be able to draw a little intuitive knowledge of how that works. It's like, well, the bike is actually a persona right now, not a device. Um, and you could potentially dump shocker 
like if you were to crank the noise up super high or brick the uh or like hack the bike and force it to reboot or something along those lines whatever they want to do it's potential that they can do that or bike has a persona active with combo. You can just have them call the bike because that persona will have a, a relevant com code available and doing so will um, will get them to be able to talk to the the young woman. Play up the fact that she is scared and trapped and things aren't really going super well. You can obviously then do everything you can with a normal com code with them. Um, bring them into a group call, have your, your face start talking to them, have a a conference call with the Johnson and his daughter, and that'll be kind of weird. Um, an important thing is the ancients don't want the bike. After having it show up riderless at their place, some of the people who aren't exactly uh, all that savvy, it's haunted or possessed or something along those lines. They don't want it hanging around. However, they don't necessarily want to give it away for free and wants to avoid legal issues. So, they know that the bike is very valuable and they are kind of looking to get rid of it, but at the same time they are trying to avoid a bunch of bunch of problems. They know that there was an accident. They know that the um, the girl who was involved is not exactly a a nobody. Um, in the corporate world, she's a nobody. But when you are dealing with people who are worth a lot more than the locals of the area, you're a nobody. Um, the ancients are more than happy to sell them the bike for a a moderate amount of money that is up to you on how much you want to charge them dependent upon the uh, the game you're running and how, what kind of mods you put into it and how good a negotiation your face is. But things like <clears throat> being upfront about the fact that you are not here from a, a legal aspect, they just want the bike back, or the uh, maybe you are here as part of like an insurance claims thing, which is what happened in my games for for GMs one. They portrayed themselves as uh, insurance adjusters for Dockwagon. <clears throat> so in the under the promise of there's not going to be any legal things coming down upon us, they just want the bike back. They were able to get the bike significantly cheaper. However, your team wishes to to really disguise that, um, or or you could steal it. The um, it won't be in a super defensible area, like you know, it's not locked down hard. Maybe a garage with a couple of com, uh, a couple of maglocks or something along those lines. Most of the threat in the stealing aspect is going to be the community around, and that they are not really. Um, there's a, there'll be a couple of gangers, and there'll be a lot of civilians, and it is entirely possible to just cut, to solve this run without really getting into anything super criminal, and still have it as be kind of a feel-good thing at the end. You will be saving a young woman's life who is now going to enter into a moderately difficult aspect of growing up, and it'll be interesting to see where that goes. It is up for you as the, the GM running it, to to point that in a direction. Um, aftermath. So at the end, they're, they're going to get paid. Depending upon how they did it, they have the option to reveal her technomancy to father. Depending upon how your your game is organized and such, it'll be on to use whether or not he is supportive of that if he is disowning of his daughter, if he gives them extra money to extra money to keep quiet, 
that is up to you guys on how you want to want to do that for your table. Um, including the option for depth. And that is once again dependent upon how your table wants to run it. Maybe he becomes vengeful. Maybe he was like, you know what? It it doesn't matter anymore. She she passed during the surgery, unfortunately, and just pays the runners and cuts all ties. Um, other potential payment options, because this is where you can kind of give them some more rewards without giving them direct karma or Muyan rewards is a couple of different contacts, be it Ancients, be it the daughter, maybe the, the Johnson himself, as he, you know, owes you guys a favor. The daughter, let's say you want to play it out that the father is disowns her immediately over the technomancy thing. Well, now, the daughter needs some help. She can become a contact. You can bring her to the ancients. And they can get contacts that way. Um, maybe this would potentially be if you have a a new player who wishes to play, let's say, an elven technomancer to introduce her into the team. Potential. Um, you would obviously want to sort that all out with your potential player first and that kind of thing. Um, and you can tweak the run a bit to fit that, but it could be a neat thing to, to do if that is what your tape wants to do. Um, additional new yen options? Well, they're going to get... Oh, man. Paid for the job. The, there is a amount that you guys have negotiated for there. They can get additional payment for returning the bike if they go with talking to the J early. If they come up with information that leads them to believe that the ancients are intentionally, but we're like attacking could be revenge on ancients. If they reveal the technomancy, keep quiet about technomancy. If they call him call right before surgery, because they have some idea of what's going on and they think that the surgery is going to be bad, he, they can call up with an emergency, knock that off. And that can do stuff. Um, they can also get favors as somewhere in there as an ancient, as a, in addition. Uh, other options. Money from, is potential that money from the ancients. To keep them. Another potential contact they could grab is Homeless Henderson, depending upon how that goes. I really like the idea of him as a as a contact. Um, but so far, I think for my my first one of these, this might be where I call it uh, a lot of the intermediary parts after the initial legwork to how they get to the twist and the aftermath is going to depend upon your table, your runners that you have, and the way your table is arranged and how you wish to how you wish to play that out. Down in the description there will be a link to this Google Drive document where it has the, the notes that I have taken here in front of you. I'm going to apologize for the Let's call it lower professional quality, as I'm still trying to learn how to do this. If you have different aspects that you want to see me cover in further runs, like in further videos like this, please post it in the comments. If you want me to flesh out different types of run ideas in another area, post them in the comments too. I will totally try to work something out. I have a couple other, I shouldn't say a couple, I have a bunch of other runs that I can easily make into to videos like this. I plan on doing one for my Death Race 2075, which was Games for GMs 2, if you want to check that out, that has strange mechanics because using chase rules for a 100-mile race is 
is dumb and not fun. A slog. Uh, I have one for a poker game that I'll be putting out sometime next week, I hope. Uh, but thank you guys very much for listening. Please do the YouTube thing that actual YouTubers will ask you to do because I don't... Uh, I'm not one of them yet. Maybe one day I will be, but thank you guys for your support, and I will talk to you later.